This video describes how competition for parental love and esteem can be difficult from the perspective of a sibling. Here is the sister without an eating disorder who is suffering from jealousy and anger about how the eating disorder takes up parental attention. Sometimes it can be the opposite way around. The child with an eating disorder feels less favoured. People with eating disorders have a reduced sense of affiliation and do not seem to be able to enjoy or recognise comfort from closeness easily. Once the eating disorder develops, the competition can be about the amount of eating and exercise. In order to keep the peace, the sibling without an eating disorder may also have to eat a pudding no matter how much she has eaten earlier. Or they want to go out for a run, then the ED sibling may insist on running twice the distance. In this video, 17-year-old Tom has anorexia nervosa. He and his 19-year-old sister Mandy are on a walking holiday with their parents in Scotland. Well, I can safely say this is the worst bloody holiday yet. The holiday to end all holidays. Mandy, darling, don't make it worse than it is. We've had a good afternoon. Did you enjoy the afternoon, Tom? Yeah, I guess so. The walk was nice. Nice? You say the walk was nice? You spent the first couple of hours racing ahead of us. I thought the whole point of this break was to relax, take in a bit of scenery, stop off at little pubs for lunch. Well, at least that was your story, Dad. That was my intention. So instead, we spend the entire afternoon chasing after Linford Buddy Christie here. Then we get to the village where I'm starving and could kill for some fish and chips, but hey, guess what? No can do because Anorexic Carney here decides he'll only eat soup for supper. So yeah, fine, we'll all have to eat soup. It's so all about him. We said you could have fish and chips. Don't start on that one. Don't make the situation any worse, Mandy, please. Mandy, I didn't stop you having what you wanted. I just didn't want any. I didn't feel like that for supper. You guys can all eat what you want. I just don't want that type of stuff. And let's not forget it's all about you. Whether we're at home, on holiday, or on the bloody moon, life orbits around Tom and his 1001 fads. Well, that's not true, man. It bloody is too. Mind your language. Well, tell us, what do you want to do tomorrow? Tomorrow we'll do what you want to do. Yeah, I've heard that one before. Okay, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to get up, have some breakfast, go for a slow, leisurely walk in the morning. Come back, have some lunch, then maybe play some Wii, you know, like we used to. Then just relax without darting here, there and everywhere. Then we will all go for fish and chips, you know, as a family, as a normal family would do on holiday. Travel advisor says the local chippy won best Yuki chippy in 2010. It's like Goldilocks and the three bloody birds. For goodness sake, just give him a bowl the size of the rest of us so we can get rid of that bloody illness if that's what it is. I'm not doing it. Not doing what, darling? Doing what she suggests we do tomorrow. I'll go for the walk, but I don't want to be sitting still all afternoon. I need to be moving about, otherwise I feel overwhelmed, you know? And I just, I can't eat anything from a chippy. Yeah, but we've got to cater to everybody, Tom. It's a family holiday and we're all part of that family. Well... How about you and Mandy go, and, and Tom and I stay back here? No way! He can stay here, how about that? Listen, I'm 19. This could quite possibly be my last holiday with you guys. Have you, has that ever crossed your mind this week? Just for once, I would like to have dinner with both my parents. I couldn't give a damn about him, because you know what? He couldn't give a damn about me. He couldn't give a damn about... He couldn't give a damn about me, and he couldn't give a damn about any of us. Otherwise, he'd eat a piece of bread. That's not true. That's, you know it's not. Then prove it. Prove it. Eat that. No, that's not big enough. That's a normal bite size. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Dad, take me to the station tomorrow. I'm out of here. I've had enough. 
I'm going on holiday with my friends from uni next time. I only came because you asked me to. No, pleaded with me to come and it is so not working. This is the last holiday as a so-called family. I've had it with him and I've had it with you guys pandering after him. I'm history. In this version, can you recognise the skills and techniques the parents are using? Well, I can safely say that's the worst bloody holiday yet. The holiday to end all holidays. I can see that you're upset, darling. Th this illness is hard on all of us. Its whole intention is to drive a wedge in between our family. We're not going to let it do that to us. What are you thinking, Tom? I did enjoy my day, Mum, honestly, and I'm sorry, Mandy, if I've ruined it all again. I did have a good day, honestly. Good day? You seriously thought that was a good day? You've got a short memory. You've totally forgotten the really good days we used to have. Let me remind you, you spent the first couple of hours racing ahead of us. I thought the whole point of this break was to relax. Take in a bit of scenery, stop up a little pubs for lunch. Well, at least that was your story, Dad. I remember when we used to talk about all sorts together. I just think this whole thing sucks. I know it's tough for you right now. And this break is intended to be as enjoyable for all of us, but... So instead, we spend the entire afternoon chasing after Linford Buddy Christie here. I mean, what was all that about? What were you trying to prove? You could go faster and quicker than everybody else. I'm sorry, but I wasn't aware this holiday was about competition. Okay, 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 I can see what's happening. We're beginning to be swept up on the crest of that emotional wave. Your mother's right. We will not allow the eating disorder to destroy our family and our relationships with each other, right? So how about taking a deep breath, Mandy? This isn't helpful to any of us, yourself included. We could all use calming down a bit, and maybe afterwards we can talk about how we can do it better tomorrow. I'm not in the mood for calming down. I was starving earlier, and I would have loved some fish and chips, but hey, guess what? No can do, because anorexic carne here decides we'll only eat soup for supper. So yeah, fine, we'll all have to eat soup. You always give in to him. Like I said, deep breath, Mandy. How about eating supper first? None of us has to talk until we've finished if we don't feel like it. Then maybe afterwards we can mull over some of the mistakes that have been made today and the lessons learned. And on a more positive note, how to apply those learned lessons to make tomorrow a more enjoyable day for all of us. Mum and Dad sense the building pressure. They use empathy and sidestep any arguments to take the heat out of the situation following this up by setting boundaries. Dad also rolls with continuing resistance and offers some positive problem-solving strategies. So, we all seem a bit calmer. Anybody mind if I just reflect on what happened? Go ahead. Anything's better than the deafening silence. Dad and I didn't get it quite right today, which is okay. Nobody's perfect. We didn't realise that you were really in the mood for fish and chips, Mandy. And they did smell good. I guess my anxiety was running at an all-time high and I just didn't stop to consider what you would have wanted. I personally was very well aware that this dinner would have freaked the hell out of you, Tom, and that your eating disorder would have been screaming all sorts in your ear, and that the repercussions would have been that you wouldn't have eaten anything. What I'm wondering is whether any of you can think of possible solutions. You know, if this were to happen, say, tomorrow. Let's start with you, Tom. Mum acknowledges that she and Dad get things wrong. Mum suggests that they have options and choices about what to do next, exhibiting confidence that they can come up with solutions together. I could have sat in, but like, I even hate the smell. I feel it seeping into my skin. Well, for goodness sake, Tom, when are you going to stop this crap? 
I want my brother back again. The one I used to enjoy being around. Okay, well, that's your eating disorder talking, so we could have stayed in, but that would also have made you uncomfortable. Any other solutions? Dad uses reflections to summarise what she has picked up. He uses empathy, but refuses to engage in ED talk. You could have brought it home. You could have had whatever you wanted and then brought it back here. That way I could have put the fan on in the kitchen window and it would have taken the fat fumes straight out again. Okay, so it sounds like bringing the food back here could have been an option. What are you thinking, Mandy? Not the perfect option, as I wanted to eat in the chippy. But hey, better than bloody soup. Yeah, I saw those good-looking guys <laughs> sitting in there too. No options in life forever. Perfect, my darling. <laughs> this illness is tough on both of you, on your relationship with each other. We won't let us beat us, though. Memories of past good times are, are hard to lose. Mandy, I do appreciate your letting us know where we've got it wrong. And we're so fortunate because we can talk about it openly and calmly and try to find the way to, to make it better the next time. Tom, we love you. Not the eating disorder. We want all of you back again. But not eating is never an option for anyone. And arguing about food it is pointless. No. I'm going to wash up. How about you guys discuss what you'd like to do tomorrow and think about potential obstacles, Tom, and how we can all jump over the hurdles. Mandy, <laughs> I'm absolutely determined that this is the holiday to begin all holidays. Although I know you're both at the age when you want to flap your wings and go off on your own. That's why it's so very important that we get you back on the road to recovery, Tom. Come on, bro. Let's try again. Let's try and seize the moment. Tomorrow's a new day. Fancy game of Wii like we used to? Like old and happier times? Okay then, thanks. One condition, I'm not colluding with the devil. Nothing that involves you jumping around all over the place, right? Fair enough. I'm determined this pain in the butt will be history before much longer. Come on. Mum doesn't get drawn into only discussing food. Mum reminds them all that there are options and choices and she and Dad will keep trying, mentioning the happier times, and so plants the seed that these could happen again. Mum separates the eating disorder from the person. Mandy offers an olive branch and suggests an experiment.